Why do banks buy so much insurance? Now these numbers down here represent how much these big banks have in cash values in their insurance policies. This is what they call tier one capital or what we call at the middle class level whole life insurance. And so banks are very intentional about where they store their savings and they choose to keep it with life insurance companies inside whole life for a number of reasons. And so when it comes to success, it can be boiled down to as easy of a concept as just watch what some of the best players in the money game do and then just implement what they are actually doing. Okay, don't necessarily do what they tell you to do, do what they're actually doing. If this, in this case, if the banks are choosing not to store their savings with other banks, which is where they tell middle America to store their savings, then we should take a step back and say, maybe we should do what they're doing instead of what they tell us to do. There's a reason why they have so much money inside their insurance policies. So let's look at why that is. Why are these banks buying so much whole life insurance? And this is a letter we have from Barry Dyke, who's the author of The Pirates of Manhattan. And if you've not read that book, I would highly recommend you pick it up. Uh, it, it might irritate you a little bit because what Barry has done is, in my opinion, done more research and investigation into who's really buying whole life insurance. Um, and what he found out is it's the wealthiest families, it's the biggest corporations, it's the biggest businesses like these big banks, Walmart, you know, companies and entities like this, these massive corporations love whole life insurance. But if you go to the middle class level, there's almost this repulsiveness to it. You know, if you bring up that word, people are already in the mindset of, oh, there's something bad about that. And we have to rethink our thinking if we want to eventually achieve different results. And so this is a, a letter that we have from him. And I just want to hit on a few points here. He says, during the financial crisis and even today, the life insurance accounts were perhaps the only place the banks did not lose money. So he's talking back to 2008. Now, we learned something very unique about whole life insurance, which is one of the reasons why the banks love it. It is the only guaranteed asset that we know of, meaning it cannot lose money. Okay, if you abuse it, yes, it could go away, but whole life has a guaranteed contract as long as you're putting in those premiums it's going to perform exactly the way it was intended to perform so right there that makes it the most perfect foundational vehicle for you to build your wealth upon because it's the only guaranteed asset you know he goes on to say all these banks have more in their cash value insurance than they do their own defined benefit pensions or their retirement programs. Isn't that interesting? You see, middle America has been taught to put all of our money in 401ks, IRAs, wait 25 to 30 years, and then you can use that cash. But these banks have more in their insurance policies than they do their own pension plans. You know, that should stop and make you think. If you go and read his book, he goes into lots and lots of detail. And at the end of his letter, he basically says this. I could go into more detail, but the gist is that the banks are the biggest buyers of high cash value life insurance because they completely understand the economic benefits they receive from life insurance companies. Now, this is the why behind their reasoning for putting in so much money inside these insurance policies. What are the benefits that they get by keeping their savings with insurance companies? Well, number one, they get professional money management. What does that mean? It means if you look at the track record of these big mutually owned insurance carriers, a lot of them have been around since the 1800s. You know, 150 years some of these companies have been around. There's no other company you can find that has a better track record of success for these for money or in business in general. And so you get that as a serious advantage. Next, the tax deferral nature of the product. Because insurance is not an investment, it's meant to replace your human life value. And it's typically funded with after-tax dollars. All the growth and how you access this thing and transfer it in the future when you're, when you're no longer here will be tax-free. You get unmatched stability. You see, because the asset is guaranteed, it is so stable, you can literally predict how it's going to grow in the future. 
making it the perfect foundational vehicle. You get high non-correlated returns. This one is interesting because most of middle America thinks whole life insurance has a low rate of return. But it is, it's interesting that the big banks, which are you know, some of the wealthiest companies in the world, are describing it as having a high rate of return. Now, non-correlated means not attached to the stock market. They don't want their money in the stock market. And when they say high returns, because they know how to look at the asset. You see, whole life insurance has more in common with your checking or savings account or a liquid safe asset than it does an investment grade vehicle. And so when you look at it in the proper light, which is as a savings vehicle, and if you're going to get a three to four percent, you know, net return every single year, there's no bank out there that's paying three to four percent tax-free net of fees, taxes, and commissions on their savings accounts. So when you when you put it in that light, you're earning, you know, four to five hundred percent minimum inside these policies than you do with the banks. They get improvements to their income statement. What they mean by that is because the cash is non-reportable, it just grows inside your insurance policy, you don't have to claim any of it and it doesn't, it doesn't show up in any credit report or anything like that. And so you can use that cash to grow your business or provide improvements to their income statement, but you don't have to claim or report any of it, giving you some very unique advantages in the money game. And then unsurpassed liquidity. This is also a very liquid asset. You can get access to this cash for whatever you want, whenever you want, because you are the unilateral owner of this contract. So when you put all those ingredients together and you understand that, it's pretty easy now to understand why would the banks keep billions of dollars inside of this insurance policy. And this is why, because what we just described is the world's greatest savings vehicle.